sweep away my pain bring your healing to my heart help me love once again cares and worries get me down fear of failure fills my day When I'm lost and all alone Help me Lord to find your way People knocking at my door Strangers seeking love and care Never let me turn them down Teach me gently how to share Children come into my life With your laughter and your song When will I become like them? Teach me Lord to sing alone Hello dear friends, hearty welcome to all of you once again. Okay, we were looking into one of the most important events in the life of the prophet Isaiah. And of course, kindly go through the biblical text thoroughly. Because then only we will be able to follow the explanations given. And we will be able to meditate on it and pray over it. And we were speaking about the hardening of the heart. As we said, ICO was given a particular mission, a rare commission. You go and preach. And what will be the consequence? The people will harden their heart. And hence, it is said, you can go and do your ministry. And this hardening of the heart we already explained. It is the deliberate neglect, habitual deafness, and total indifference. Just to remember the uh, example we said. Going to the church for Holy Mass on Sundays. When we go for such a pious action, the sacrifice, we know, we make or we can harden our heart when we deliberately neglect it. It is not occurring by chance, but deliberately, knowingly, I am not performing it or I am disregarding it. And that is called practically the deliberate neglect. And when I continuously neglect it, practically all that is said about it falls into deaf ears. I make my ears deaf. And in the beginning I will be hearing what is being said but I neglect. After some time it happens that my ears become deaf to the word spoken. I may be hearing it, but really not listening to that because it does not enter into my inner ears. Therefore, a deafness 
develops and this deafness becomes habitual whatever be said practically i am least to worried about it and that is the way they think of it and therefore we know one becomes habitually deaf does not lend one ear to god's word and when i deafen my heart what happens i am not at all concerned about what is being said and hence i develop a kind of indifference and that is why the last stage is a total indifference and thus my heart becomes so hard that nobody can reorient it and save me so easily easily it will be so tough so difficult and this is the result of hardening the heart <clears throat> and hardening of the heart whose work it is we can see in bible we will find that it is the work of yahweh himself sometimes and sometimes it is said the people harden their heart of course we are familiar with both situations yahweh hardening the heart when each of the miracle performed of performed by moses prior to the exodus we find after each of the miracle pharaoh hardened his heart but actually it is said yahweh hardened his heart and he would not let the people go from egypt therefore it is actually yahweh who is hardening the heart here yahweh hardened the heart of pharaoh the same way sometimes we find yahweh hardening the heart of a people whom he wants to punish for their sin and we can also see that the people they harden their heart on their own and when they harden their heart what happens they don't hear god's message they don't see god's face and they don't perceive what god wants them to do and they are not ready to forsake what is against god and return to yahweh they hold on to themselves and hence we can see they are hardening their heart by themselves and thus we can understand the phrase hardening of the heart in these two ways and therefore what are we supposed to understand from all this if hardening of the heart is the work of god what is the aim of it the aim of hardening the heart is not to punish the person but to make him come back to yahweh to make him repent of his sin and be aware of god's presence and god's laws and that is the reason why yahweh hardens the heart of an individual therefore we can say if yahweh is hardening the heart it is for the salvation of that particular person hence we can say hardening of the heart is god's own work but at the same time we can also see that 
it is a modality of yahweh's dealings with the people and this is explicit at the time of the exodus god was hardening the heart of pharaoh after each miracle and then it had a different purpose and that purpose was in a way to punish them for being hard hearted and not allowing the people of israel to go away from egypt and hence we can see it was the work of yahweh in order to punish pharaoh and the nation of egypt and the hardening of the heart here is meant for a thorough purification a thorough cleansing of the heart we can say and thorough purification would mean we know for example hardening of the heart is not a momentary act not a single act of disobedience but more than that it is a process and it comes to be a permanent attitude of the individual or we can say a concrete attitude of the nation and hence the people or the nation hardens its heart and that is what is mentioned here but the aim of this is to make them come back that's for we can say hardening of the heart is aimed at their redemption or salvation it is not for punishing them but to save them hence the real purpose of hardening the heart we can say to make the people come back to yahweh so that they may be saved therefore this is the real purpose of hardening of the heart if it is done by yahweh himself but if it is done by the people how to understand it is their disposition of heart they have chosen for themselves to be hard hearted and they shut their hearts they close their eyes and with the result they fail to understand the prophetic message and hence they are not going to be saved they become hard hearted in such a way that salvation is away from them therefore when somebody or some individual hardens the heart he or she is unable to accept the prophetic message the request to repent over one sins and come back to yahweh and therefore practically this is the meaning of hardening of the heart and why this kind of hardening of the heart occurs in the life of a person <clears throat> when somebody is not ready to accept god's message god will allow him to harden his heart we can say because he or she may be destined for destruction according to the bible and that's what we can say thus hardening of the heart is an voluntary process 
done by the individual or the work of the divine if it is the work of the divine it is aimed at their salvation aimed at their purification on the other hand if it is the habitual deafness to the god's word neglect of god's word and the consequent indifference to yahweh's message then that would mean they are opting for non redemption non salvation they don't want to be saved they want to be in a way the state of condemnation or destruction and that is the work of the individual not of yahweh at all and therefore it is in this way that we can understand it and the hardness of heart is a judgment of god on the human being it can be for his good and it is meant to be for good but if they do not accept it as god's work then it will be without a meaning and it will be also mentioned here that israel chooses to remain hard hearted voluntarily and that would imply they don't want to be saved by repentance therefore hardness of heart will always affect the performance of a person and it will be a real block for the salvation of humanity and therefore we can say this is the way we are to understand about hardness of heart and we also find that if an individual hardens his or her heart yahweh will complete the hardening process because he wants to save them but sometimes it may be through punishing them and the hardening of the heart makes one non believing in yahweh or it makes one unfaithful to yahweh and yahweh's word because one is not able to digest the message given by yahweh and or the proclamation made about god's dealing with the people and when one is hard hearted again we can say one is unable to perceive the depth of god's call because he has shut himself he has blinded himself then naturally one will not be able to see hear and digest the message of god for him or her and therefore this is the way that is meant by hard heartedness and we can also explain it in another way it is acting contrary to what one knows hard heartedness we know that yahweh is faithful to his promises he is a compassionate god and he is always there to redeem us but what happens we habitually neglect this message and thus we see we refuse to acknowledge what is right and this is another sign of hard heartedness acting contrary to what one knows to be right or what is right and again we can say hard heartedness in the beginning was a punishment given for the enemies of israel and that was considered to be a work of yahweh but when 
the same is attributed to the people of Israel. Practically, it becomes a means of punishment of Yahweh on them. That also we will see here. And with regard to the commission entrusted to him, there we find in verse 9, Go and say to these people, and this is a particular way of giving or entrusting a person with a particular commission. And we will find it in the life of the people, many people, the great prophets, Jeremiah. Then, for the judge Gideon, Joshua, Ezekiel, to all of them we find God is saying, Go, I sent you. The same way here. He said, go and say to these people. And therefore, go and say. And this modality of commissioning is uh, often found in the case of the great prophets and judges. Okay, therefore, what we can understand from all this? If we are deliberately neglecting, discarding, despising the word of God, we become hard-hearted. And if we become hard-hearted, what is impact? It is very difficult to bring them out and save them. We can just say, to commit a sin is almost like stepping into the mud. And if we are stepping into the mud, we know what happens. We may gradually sink down if it is a marshy place. Somebody else should come and save us. And when somebody is hard-hearted, what will happen? He or she will not be ready to listen to the messages spoken by others. And thus sometimes he may lose even the opportunity to save himself. Okay, we are familiar with the stories which occur in different places. I remember having read the story that happened at the time of the great hurricane which devastated a great part of United States. And the name of that hurricane was Katrina. And we know when the hurricane with the more than 200 kilometers of speed came onto the shore nearby the old, the city of New Orleans in USA, a bunt of a canal was broken and the city was practically lying underneath. And what happened? The water began to pour into the city. Water was rising and the soldiers, military people and voluntary workers, people all went around knocking at the door of each house saying, kindly escape from the house and there is provisions, uh, there is a uh, facility for that, make use of the boards available. But the people thought the water will not rise up 
too much and hence they remained in their house again the people came and said water will go up to 20 feet high but the people did not accept them and when the water was rising it is said the water was reaching up to the roof top and many of the people who refused to go out from their houses began to uh, what is called drown inside their own house because there was no more space and they could not rip open the roof and come out and then this incident was uh okay considered to be the result of their hard heartedness actually they were given the opportunity but they refused and sometimes the same may happen to the people who are hard hearted they are given opportunities after opportunities to get out of that but they may not take care and therefore we can see hard heartedness will destroy the person and will be a block for the salvation of a person and hard heartedness because of sin is still more complicated and difficult when somebody willfully hardens one's heart keeps away from god's message nobody will be able to save such a person it is just like stepping into the mud of a marshy place knowingly it is fatal but some people are like that they won't listen to what others say they have shut their eyes they have closed their ears and they have no more power to perce- perceive into their hands and they do not comprehend thus they make their own lives miserable and they destroy themselves the for this is what we can understand about the hardening of the heart and now the prophet is asking what or how long will it last the prophet is asked you go and proclaim on then what is the effect they will see but will not really perceive and they will hear but do not understand and that's the way therefore how long should one preach like this and of course here we can understand it in uh, in a different way too god is asking him to go and preach and this passage refers to the reaction that he should expect from the people he is going to preach to the people but god is warning him don't expect miracles from them you go and proclaim they will not listen to you thus god is preparing for the negative experiences that would come for him he should not expect a positive result but probably it will be just the negative alone and therefore in a way we can say i say is prepared by god himself to go for a ministry which is practically fruitless and that does not mean who should not go and proclaim who knows the heart of anyone 
who hears a message may be touched at a moment which nobody knows and therefore the prophet is to continue his mission but whether the people will accept it or not he need not think of that that is implication therefore he is asked to go and proclaim but should not expect a positive result and if he expects a totally negative result what is our advantage if at least one person gets converted he will be satisfied because he thought there will be nobody coming back to the lord and therefore hard heartedness is indeed a stage from which the human beings are to <coughs> go back or are to come back to yahweh himself and now the prophet asked how long should i go like this or how long will the people remain like this hard hearted and the answer is given verse 11 i said how long o lord and he said until cities lie waste without inhabitant and this is practically referring to the state of exile then the people will be practically abandoning their houses and they will be compelled to do that and houses will be empty and the cities will be without inhabitant and everything will be just a, an emptiness and emptiness of the land will be such a vast thing and to experience or to look at and then it is said if there is a tenth of or at least a one tenth part remains that will be burned again that will be destroyed again the lord says that means these people are meant for a thorough destruction nobody can save them from them and therefore it is referring to the future exile that is going to come over them or on them but they were not affected by these words and then the lord also gives a promise the seed of a holy seed will remain there or the stump of jesse it is said and from that stump the sprouts will come it will grow to be a tree and thus even in the background of this hard heartedness and thorough destruction and the rejection of the people still there will be a holy seed and that is the practically the remnant and this remnant will be the source of the new jerusalem a new jerusalem will be built up on this and therefore even if there is destruction now in the future they will have the time of hope and restoration therefore hardness of heart looks forward immediately to destruction but for the distant future it is the source of hope also in this way we can understand the theme of hard heartedness that is explained here okay uh, we will deal with the rest of the messianic prophecies tomorrow and kindly make it a point to go through the coming chapters chapters 7 8 9 and 10 okay thank you loving god we thank you for the blessing of reading your word together We ask that these words of life, truth and hope would continue to impact us in the days ahead. 
May your love and grace follow each of us, refreshed and blessed by you. Amen.